And hello everybody! So, uh, in this video, I am essentially going to be answering some questions. Uh, for those that don't know, I essentially made a QA and a um, at... I'm not sure when this video is going to be uploaded, but uh, yeah, so I did make a QA and a that I, that I mentioned on the community tab on YouTube, which you can see right here. And I asked a bunch of you to ask me questions about Madoka or whatever you wanted. And so in this video, we're going to be responding to those questions. I really want to take the time to uh, express my gratitude for everybody that uh, took the time to write me questions. It really, it made me happy to see that, you know, a lot of you wanted to, you know, you generally wanted to uh, converse with me on a couple of things. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. So the very first question that we will answer is from Coco Cat 28 who's very enthusiastic. I noticed this person is very enthusiastic when it comes to commenting on my videos, which I'm really happy. I'm very happy that uh, that you're here, Coco Cat. Anyway, so you have a couple of questions which you're gonna answer first. So your first question is, what does this dream mean? I was in an airplane with other magical girls and one of them was named San, San Taigo. <laughs> he started making fun of Madoka and her outfit. So me and Homer transformed and blasted San, San San, Santigato's head. What wish would you, oh so so that's his first question. Um, to be quite honest with you, I don't know how to answer that question. I will be completely honest with you on that. I'm not really an expert when it comes to dreams. I I know that the idea is that they say that in psychology, you know, the dreams that you have are, are like secret messages that you're kind of getting. Uh, but in in your case, I don't particularly know. I mean, obviously, the fact that you're dreaming about Madoka means that you really, really love the series. Like you love, you love Madoka on a subconscious level, and it's very deep because you're 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 actually dreaming about it, um, which I can kind of relate to because I have dreamed about mommy before uh, in the past. I have a video where I once made where I talk about I dream of mommy, and I essentially talk about. I think I had two dreams where I was talking to her. One was where I was kind of like her gay male girlfriend in the dream where I was trying to help her find a guy and another dream that I had was um, and I was also her senpai in that dream and I had another dream where I was so embarrassed to be face to face with her and I was so much so that I was I saw myself blushing and kind of looking away and mommy was trying to get into my face and she was trying to pull my hands away from my face so she could see the fact that I was blushing because I think that in the dream she really liked the attention that I was giving to her and the idea that I was so embarrassed and shy to actually you know see her face um so I could tell that she really liked that uh so uh yeah so that right there uh is an example of of a dream that I had but you know, and, and I think the reason that I had a dream about, that I had two dreams about mommy is because of how much I like her. So I would say that I loved her so much, or I love her so much that I was thinking about her on a subconscious level. Because uh, I think that a lot of times dreams just sort of reflect what is most on your mind and what you really, you know, sort of connect yourself to. So the fact that you're dreaming about Madoka Magica, um, and I guess Magical Girls really says that you have a very, very deep-rooted passion for Madoka and Magical Girls in general. So that's the biggest thing that I would say. The fact that Madoka is appearing in your dream, that is just really the universe letting you know, man, you you really have a very strong passion. I, I hope you're doing uh, things, but I hope you're doing things with that passion. Um, you know, I, like I said, I appreciate the fact that you're commenting on my videos. As I said, I can tell that you're very passionate about Madoka from the things that you that you actually say in your actual comments. So, yeah, that's the biggest thing. I just think that this dream really says that, you know, you have a very strong connection with Madoka, which is probably why you're here. I mean, that's probably why you're on my channel, right? Uh, anyway, so, yeah, that's kind of all I can say about that one. The first question that you made was who... The, the second question that Coco Cat left is... Who made the worst wish and best wish in the Holy Quintet, in your opinion? Uh, let's see here. So, okay, so who do I think made the worst wish within the, uh, the main characters within Madoka? That's a very, very good question. And I will admit that at the top of my head, I actually don't know who made the worst wish. I'm trying to think. So you have Mommy that essentially wished to survive. Kyoko wished to... Uh, help her father. Sayaka wished to save the boy that she loved. Uh, Madoka wished to essentially save everybody. She also made a, a really interesting wish in the first timeline to save a cat. For those that don't know, Madoka's very first wish in the Madoka series was to save a cat. 
and uh, Homura's wish was to save Madoka. To be quite honest with you, I actually think the worst wish that was made in the series was actually the wish that Kyoko made. Um, now, I just want to clarify, yes, I do understand that Kyoko had very good intentions, and I think that it's beautiful that she loved her father so much and really admired him for what he was doing, that she wanted to do her part in lending him a helping hand. But I just think that while her intentions were wonderful and beautiful, I definitely think that that type of wish was probably what I would consider to be the worst one because, you know, and, and I once made a video where I tried to look at the situation with Kyoko uh, from Kyoko's father's perspective. And I think that, you know, when you're a man or if you're a person that's really trying to push toward a goal or something that you really believe in, in Kyoko's father's case, he really believed in the words that he was preaching, which he felt was really going to help, you know, society to become happier and to be more fruitful. He really believed in his vision and what he and what he believed. And he really did everything that he could to make his words heard and really push toward you know his goals and unfortunately when Kyoko made the wish to want to help him and once he realized what she had did it kind of made him feel like he was a failure because he had tro he had worked so hard to achieve the goal of helping people through what he through his words and when he finally and, and and then he finally felt that he had broken through after going through so much struggle so much ridicule it's like his family was poor he clearly felt very bad about that you know you you see if you remember the scene where they were they were pouring water on on him when he was trying to preach from outside their window so this was a person who went through so much in in pursuit of of his uh, of his vision of his of what he believed in and you know and 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 everybody can relate to that we all we're all trying to, in some in some form of, 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 in some form, trying to push toward our goals and our ambitions and our dreams, whether it's through going to college or going to school or working, or maybe you, you're starting a YouTube channel and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to build an audience or whatever. We all have different things that we're trying to achieve. And one of the things that makes achieving your goals satisfying is when you put in the work and then you actually can see your efforts pay off little by little because being successful is like a step-by-step -step process. Um, you know, the idea is that you make short-term goals and then you slowly build yourself up to your ultimate goal. Um, but in Kyoko's father's case, he went through all the struggles that you go through to achieve what you want. And he got there, but then he realized he didn't get there because it was because of his own efforts. He only got there because his daughter, who felt sympathy for him and essentially made it happen uh, through a wish, which didn't require you know, that same level of effort to make it happen. So, you know, so I think that a lot of why he was depressed and why he felt like a failure was because his efforts didn't pay off and because of the wish that Kyoko made. So, you know, and again, yes, Kyoko had wonderful intentions. Kyoko loves her father. She's a beautiful person for caring so much about some someone that she would willingly make a wish like that. But definitely, I think that her intentions were wonderful, but I think in the long run, it really hurt her father a lot. So it's very unfortunate. It's unfortunate for Kyoko's father and Kyoko herself. Again, wonderful intentions, but again, I don't feel like that was a good wish to make. So yeah, I think Kyoko had the worst wish in the Madoka series in relationship to the main girls. So yeah, that's my answer to that. And Kyoko Cat's also asking me, just curious, are you good at drawing? Um... I feel like whether or not I'm good at drawing is very subjective because everybody has their own idea of what is considered art. Um, like you could show art in front of somebody and you might think it's great, but they... So, um, I suppose I like my art. It's, it's interesting because when I was a little kid, I used to be somebody that was... Uh, I used to take lots of art classes when I was in middle school and I had teachers tell me that I had talent. You know, my, my mother was also a person who told me that I had talent. I, I don't, you know, so it's difficult to say. I suppose that whether or not I am a good artist is very subjective. Do I think I'm a good artist? I've never really thought about that. I just know that art is something that I do like. I, I have enjoyed drawing and painting in the past. I suppose, um, let me actually... Uh, alrighty then, alrighty, alrighty then, we are back. So you guys didn't actually see it, but um, I actually, my my camera and my um, 
my uh, microphone actually fell on the floor uh, just now. You didn't see it because of the power of editing. So anyway, so um, Coco Cat is asking me whether or not I uh, am I good at drawing. So I actually have something that I want to show you guys. So, uh, okay, so take a look at this. This is, uh, I hope, oh, hold on. Hold on, oh boy. It's interesting because in order for me to do these videos, I have to position my camera, my webcam a certain way. And like I said, when, when everything fell, it just sort of, it kind of affected uh, everything. All right, so I think that's good. So this is actually something that I drew when I was in the third grade. This is actually a drawing that I drew. I'm hoping that you guys can see this. Uh, but yeah, this is an example of my art style. Um, you know, uh, I'm just... I'm just going to zoom in in case you guys can't see it. But yeah, this is essentially an example of my art that I did when I was a, when I was a little boy. Um, so my mom was really proud of this. As you can see, she actually put it in an actual frame. Like, th like this is a normal frame. Like, like she, she, she really felt like my art was, was very good. And, w and when I look at this, what I like most about it is the way that I, that I, that I went about the colors. You can see the, the, the way that I mix colors together with the different you know, styles or whatever. Uh, so, which makes sense because I really like uh, color. I'm a really big fan of bright, uh, vibrant colors like yellow. It's, I guess that's one reason why I like Mommy because she's yellow. I like, you know, I like yellow, blue. I like mixing, you know, bright colors together. So, um, I like my style. I, I definitely like my, at the very least, I like my use of colors. I Because I like colors. I really like, you know, the colors and stuff. So, yeah, as I said, art is very subjective. Uh, so I def so obviously I do know how to draw. Um, so yeah, I, I will admit that um, art is something that I used to have as a passion when I was a little boy. Um, I will admit that uh, since I've gotten older, I haven't really uh, been pursuing that passion as much. I will admit. Um, you know, but maybe that's something that I might get into one day. Like maybe what I could do, because I've always thought about uh, trying to pursue the idea of drawing, um, you know, as an adult. Like I've always wondered what my drawing would be like now. Uh, so, yeah. So as I said, um, I definitely know how to draw. I think art is very subjective. And um, I don't know, maybe one day I will get back into drawing again. I definitely do think about it. Like s sometimes I go to the park and I like to meditate. And I find myself wanting to draw the trees and wanting to draw like nature, like the landscape of the grass and everything. So, you know, and I sometimes think it would be cool to draw, uh, you know, Madoki characters. Like I sometimes have this idea of wanting to do like animation where I'm drawing and I'm making the animation move. But yeah, so that's pretty much the answer to that question. I kind of went all over the place there. Anyway, so um, the next question that Coco Cat is asking me is, which magical girl do you think would be most interesting as an evil being? Uh, he's asking uh, Kyoko, Mami, Sayaka, or Madoka. And which do you personally hope becomes evil? Uh, the character that I want most to become evil in Madoka is actually Madoka herself. I actually made a video on this channel where it was three reasons why Madoka could become evil. And in that video, I sort of dive into the idea of Madoka becoming evil in the next movie. I mentioned that there's evidence in the concept trailer that points to the fact that the creators are considering the idea of Madoka becoming evil. And I think that becoming evil is something that Madoka's character needs because within Madoka Magica, we're always able to see the ugly side of all the characters. It's like we see the good sides of Madoka. Uh, not, not Madoka. We see the good sides of Sayaka. Like we see, you know, her 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 really high happy moments, but we also see her low moments. The same thing can be said for Homer. We see her high moments, her low. So essentially, within this series, we see the highs and low moments of every single girl. But I feel like Madoka doesn't have that. I feel like for the most part, Madoka is played very straight throughout the whole series. Like, we don't really get a chance to see her outside of being a goody two-shoes. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I think that Madoka's personality is beautiful in the idea that, you know, she's very emotional and she's she, she's very empathetic to all the girls. And she's always, you know, she, she, she cares so much for everybody that it, it, she's always in so much pain when she sees the other girls in pain. So I think Madoka is beautiful in the way that she is presented, but... Personally, I would have loved it if we had gotten to see a more darker side of Madoka. So I think that not only 
uh, is this needed, not only is her being evil, in my opinion, needed for her character because it would help us to see a different aspect of her. And at the same time, again, I feel like the creators are considering that they want to do this within the uh, concept trailer. And, um, and I think that there's a lot of material that they can work with because, you know, perhaps Madoka becoming a concept maybe wasn't something that she ever wanted. So maybe they could play with the idea that maybe she doesn't want that or maybe she's questioning later if that was the right decision for herself. So what I'm trying to say is that there are a lot of different ways that they can approach this should they decide to make this a reality within the Madoka series. And there's, you know, there, in other words, it's easy to find motivation, which, which is what I just mentioned. At the same time, again, the concept trailer kind of shows that they are considering doing this. So, yeah, Madoka... Oh, okay, I gotta adjust my camera again. So, yeah, Madoka is definitely the character that I most want to see become evil, and I think she's the character that needs it the most. Uh, so, yeah, out of all the characters, I'm probably gonna make some more videos about uh, evil Madoka, but, you know, somewhere down the line. And, and I guess um, Saika is also another character that I would like to be evil, or, or at least play that role of being a little bit more evil. Um, I actually have a video where I'm going to get into more detail about that, um, so look out for that. It will have either have been uploaded already or not, but essentially I have a video where I talk about Devil, Homer, and Saika being partners, so um, look out for that video because in that video I do talk about the idea of Saika becoming evil. So yeah, uh, uh, Madoka is the character that I want to be evil, Saika is number two. And the other girls are just, you know, kind of whatever. I may one day make a video where I present some kind of perspective or a theory on all the girls becoming evil or something like my own interpretation of that. So yeah, that's that's my that's my answer there. Um, so he, uh, Coco Cat is also asking, which magical girl outfit do you like best besides mommy's? That's a really good question. Uh, which outfits do I like best besides mommy's? Um, good question. Uh, whose outfit? I never really thought about that, actually. Um, wow. Whose outfit do... Well, um, if I'm being honest, and this is a... And I, and I guess I'll have a picture on the screen to illustrate this more. Uh, one outfit that I really like within the Madoka series, besides Mommy's, there's actually a character that goes by the name of, Suz of Suzune from the Madoka manga called Suzune Magica. She has an outfit that I think is really awesome. Because, for example, if you've ever seen the anime Black Rock Shooter, I really like the character designs and the clothes that they wear in that anime. And it's obvious from the appearance. And like I said, I'm probably going to have like images on the screen to illustrate this. Um, Suzune was definitely inspired from the idea of Black Rock Shooter. I just love the fact that I, I love like the trench coat that she's wearing. I also kind of love the fact that you can see a little bit of like her stomach in the actual outfit. And I, and I don't know, I, I like the color scheme. I like the gray and the blackness and, and, and I like the, you know, and she uses a sword. I just really like, uh... I love Suzune's character design. She is awesome. Like, I even love, like, the, the way that she sort of, like, the kind of look that she has on her face. And so, so yeah, I, I would say Suzune is probably has my second favorite character design. Uh, for, and for some reason, when I, when I look at Suzune, I, I sort of think of Cloud from Final Fantasy. I think that's something about, like, these two characters when it comes to their personalities and when it comes to, you know, their weapons. Like, they're both really fast and they both use the same kind of buster sword. Um, yeah, so I would say that Suzune has my second favorite uh, character design. In truth, Suzune is... Is probably one of my favorite magical girls. But anyway, so yeah, uh, Suzune has my second favorite uh, outfit uh, in terms of clothes. Uh, like I said, I just love everything. Uh, and she's also one of my favorite magical girls. So okay, so that answers that question. Um, and uh, he's also, they're also asking me, is Madoka Magica better than Sailor Moon in your opinion? abso freaking lootly Sailor Moon is an anime that I grew up with, and even though I did enjoy it as a boy, I would say that Sailor Moon was probably one of the first animes that I ever got into where I was really sucked up into the romance aspect of it when you think about Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask. Because as a child, I have always been like a hopeless romantic. I've always been so absorbed into romantic stories, whether it was from cartoons, animes, or sitcoms, and I sort of used to envision myself being in the actual romance. Like I used to live vicariously through the characters that were having a romance, and this is kind of how I got the whole idea in my head of 
wanting to meet that one special girl that I was going to spend the rest of my life with and it was going to be just like TV uh, or just like, you know, anime. Obviously, as I've gotten older and I've experienced different relationships, I have learned that all that stuff that they say on TV about finding the right person, I feel like it's kind of BS, though at the same time, I do know that there are some people that are able to have this for themselves. But I just think that the overall idea that you're going to meet one person and spend the rest of your life with them is just not true. At least, at least that's how it is for me in my own life. Maybe you're different though. Maybe you're somebody who has actually gone through a life where you did find that person and everything just played out just like it would on TV or, or in an anime or a cartoon. But, you know, I, from my perspective, I think every relationship is an opportunity to grow and to become better and that people come into your life in relationships to help you to go, go to the next level. And once you have actually have, you know, had a chance to change and become, you know, I guess better than what you were, that's essentially when the relationship ends. But again, that's my perspective on it. I think that there are so many different ways that you can view a relationship, but, um, yeah. So Sailor, I, I love Madoka much more than Sailor Moon. Uh, you know, as I said, I, I really like, like the romantic aspect of Sailor Moon, but aside from that, Sailor Moon was not very memorable. You know, it was one of the first animes that I watched as a kid. So, you know, it was it was Sailor Moon, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Digimon. Those were like the shows that I primarily watched as a little boy. And uh, yeah, so I did like Sailor Moon when I was younger. I don't care for it anymore though. And Madoka, yeah, I prefer Madoka. I think that Madoka uh, has much more interesting characters that have more depth to them. In my personal opinion, I'm not trying to say that Sailor Moon does not have good characters because I do think that they're, you know, because I think Sailor Moon is cool, you know, Serena, or Osagi, whatever version of her work name that you want to use, I think that, uh, you know, she's probably, I, I would imagine if you're a girl and you're watching uh, Osagi, she's probably very relatable. She's, well, because she struggles in school, she's a little bit of an of an airhead, and she's and she's very much like a teenage girl. Like, you can you can just sort of feel like her, t like the teenage essence of her character just all over the place. And, uh, you know, so I feel like she's probably made to be very relatable for a lot of girls. And um, so, yeah. It's just, it's just personally, I don't personally resonate with Sailor Moon very much. Like, not really. Uh, so yeah, I prefer Madoka. I think, I, for me, I resonate more with the characters. I resonate more with the story. I think Madoka, um, I like the fact that Madoka is obviously darker. And, uh, and, and not only that, there's no mommy in Sailor Moon. Like, you know, there's no mommy in Sailor Moon. I think the closest thing that you have to mommy, in my opinion, is probably, I think her name is Sailor... Is it Sailor V? Is it Sailor Venus? I forget, but there's this blonde girl, and I don't I don't remember her name, and I'm gonna have her on the screen. But this girl reminds me a little bit of mommy, but she's obviously there's there's no one better than the real thing. So yeah, I prefer Madoka more so than I do Sailor Moon, all things considered. Um I, I will admit I don't necessarily have like a really big in-depth reason because I haven't really thought about Sailor Moon in many years. Um but I can just say that, you know, Sailor Moon was uh, something that I liked as a little boy. As I've gotten older, I don't really care for it. It doesn't have anything for me. But hey, if you love Sailor Moon, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. What's really interesting is there's a YouTuber that I watched that goes by the name of CJ vs. Manga. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of Sailor Moon, the way that she talks about Sailor Moon makes it so interesting and so cool. If you haven't seen her videos, definitely check them out. She makes Sailor Moon just seem like the most awesome thing in the world, even if you're not like a super big fan of it. Maybe I'll link her channel in the description, but she makes some really great uh, in-depth analysis videos on Sailor Moon. And I think that even if you don't necessarily like Sailor Moon, you could probably watch those videos and, and feel inspired to want to maybe watch her something. So yeah, as I said, Sailor Moon is not my favorite thing, but I still have love for it. I still think that there are things to take from it. And I especially love the opening, like fighting evil by moonlight. Living love by daylight, never running from the real fight. She is the one named Sailor Moon. She is the one Sailor Moon. Anyway, so I probably spent way too much time talking about Sailor Moon. But anyway, um, so I guess the final question that Coco Cat is, uh, and I really do appreciate your enthusiasm, Coco Cat. Hopefully, uh, these answers are to your. Hopefully, these answers are, you know, to your satisfaction. But anyway, so the last question that Coco Cat is asking: Do you think Homura did anything wrong in all the movies? Um, 
This is an interesting question to answer. Um, I suppose the simple answer to this question is probably not really, or at the very least you could say, but then again, I suppose you could also say, yes, you could essentially say that Homer did everything wrong, but there's nothing wrong in the fact that she did everything wrong because Homer is an example of a character that shows you don't have to be perfect to be an imperfect masterpiece. Homer is a character that has done a lot of different things which you could view as mistakes in relationship to trying to save Madoka and you know rewinding time, everything that she did in the third movie. You could make you could make an argument that she was wrong in what she was doing, but the way that I see it is that Homer is human. And what it means to be human is that we have lots of desires and sometimes we do things that could be interpreted as being wrong, but I don't think there's anything wrong with being a human being. So what I'm trying to say is that what makes Homer great is the fact that she is an imperfect masterpiece. So, you know, I don't blame Homer for any of the feelings that she had, and I don't blame her for the things that she actually did. Um, I actually admire Homer for much of uh, what she goes through in relationship to trying to protect Madoka. And, and again, you can make a lot of arguments that, you know, that uh, perhaps she, uh, she, her heart is in the right place, but maybe she's going about it in the wrong way. But again, I think that, you know, as a, as a human being myself, you know, I understand uh, that none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. We're all trying to, I think life is about the journey. Life is about the journey. And part of what it means to go on a journey is that you will, you know, you will make mistakes. You, you will have moments where, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of falling on your face, but then you'll also have moments where you rise. But I think it's just a part of what it means to be human. You know, so Homura is a very human character. So in that, in, in the idea of her being an imperfect masterpiece, no, I don't think Homura did anything wrong. I think that she did everything wrong, and I think that she's awesome because of that, because it shows that she is human, and I can relate to that. You know, I'm much more interested in, in anime characters that I feel like I can look at and, and relate to in some way, or I can look at and feel some type of, like, human connection. You know, I'm, I'm much more into real characters more so than I am about fake cookie-cutter archetype characters. Like, it's like, what's the point? I mean, we, we have so much of that in media anyway. You know, when you think about the standard hero type of character, not, not that I dislike these characters, what I'm trying to say is that while I definitely don't mind, you know, the, the, the typical hero characters that are portrayed as being goody two-shoes doing everything right, I definitely do gravitate more toward characters that are real. And this is why I love the Madoka series, because all the characters, with the exception of Madoka, uh, they all showcase something about them that really shows that they are real, authentic people. You know, it's just like with Sayaka. Sayaka is a character that uh, has a tendency to make a lot of mistakes, but she also has, but but she's a good person. Like her, like within her hardest of hearts, she is a good person with good intentions. But she's very human. She's not perfect. She 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 has said things. She has done things in the series. And she has also learned from what she has said and what she has done, and she has evolved as a person. I think Sayaka's life is a great example of uh, of a person who who shows that in life it's about the journey. It's about you know constantly you know growing and changing you know all the time. And and again you know, but again this is what I love about the series. None of these characters are perfect. I love that. I love the raw. I love the raw authenticity of this series. But. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Kind of going all over the place. What's funny about these videos is that um, I don't I don't script these videos. I don't I almost don't even edit these videos. I essentially just you know read the questions and that you guys leave me, and I just you know I answer them at the top of my head. So that's that's why it might seem like I'm going all over the place with these answers because I'm just literally reading and answering. So anyway, I really appreciate you, Coco Cat. Um, you are amazing. Thank you for being so enthusiastic with my videos and it really does mean a lot. I, I really, uh, I do appreciate it. Thank you, Coco Cat. You're, 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 you're amazing and you're awesome and you're beautiful. Thank you. So anyway, we're going to meet and, uh, we're going to respond to another comment, um, from Meek, Mika, Mikan Sumiki. 
Mikan Sumiki asked a question. Sorry if I'm pronouncing names wrong. But anyway, so your question is, what started your channel and how did you get the motivation to upload frequently? I want to start... I want to start actually using my YouTube account for videos more, so it would be really important for me if you answered. Okay, so this is important. I will definitely answer this question. So what started your channel and how did you, okay, so how did my channel start? Uh, this channel uh, originally started as an AMV channel that I made in 2012. Uh, yeah, so I, I started it off as an AMV channel and then I randomly found the Madoka Magica Drama CDs I just found them on the internet somewhere, and I decided to upload them to this channel. I uploaded the first three, which you can still find if you search this channel. Uh, I essentially did that because, you know, I, I love, I really loved Madoka even back then. And I, um, you know, and because of the fact that I was like a really, you know, really hardcore fan to the series, I, I, I did a lot of research in the idea of wanting to learn more about the characters. And then I stumbled upon the drama CDs and... Once I actually knew that they existed, I looked for them, and then I happened to have found them on like a random website, and I decided to upload them. I guess because I just wanted to share uh, these because I didn't I didn't see them on YouTube at the time. So I figured, okay, hey, I, I love Madoka. I think these CDs are really awesome, and I want to share them with other people. So I uploaded the CDs, um, and interestingly enough, from the moment that I uploaded those drama CDs, that's when people started to slowly find my YouTube channel. Uh, my channel began to grow from not having any subscribers to, uh, I think, about 200 with only the drama CDs. And, um, you know, and because of the fact that that I was getting, you know, all these people that were subbing to me, it kind of inspired me to feel like, you know, that I wanted to do something with this channel other than upload AMVs to it. You know, and I think a lot of that just came because, you know, I watched a lot of YouTubers uh, who who made videos about talking about anime and I guess what and I guess watching them uh, kind of inspired me to want to give it a try so uh, I essentially uploaded a couple of videos to this channel uh, one of them was my reporting for duty intro which I have in every video the other one was a video talking about why I like Sayaka and why I like Madoka if you go if you actually go and watch these videos um, you will probably see that uh, I was I was very shy. Uh, you can probably like listen to the nature of my voice, and you can probably tell that I was very, very shy because uh, these were the first videos that I ever uploaded on YouTube, and I didn't know uh, anything about how to how to talk or how to appear on like camera, or how to record myself. So I was kind of nervous and kind of shy. That's why my voice sounds very light. Um, but yeah, essentially, I I uploaded these videos that I just mentioned. And I felt a lot of encouragement to want to continue because the comments that I got off of these videos were very supportive. You know, they were very nice. And I remember I was really surprised because at this time I had never uploaded, uh, you know, videos talking about, uh, you know, my love of anime at, at this time. So it really helped me a lot uh, to get encouragement. And that encouragement is essentially what helped me to want to keep making videos on this channel so essentially I just I decided to just keep making videos I you know I loved Madoka I had you know I had built a very strong connection from it from watching anime as well as making anime music videos with it so I just began to uh, make more and more videos and 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 the channel just began to grow more and more and more of you started to find me and discover me <laughs> and uh, that was um so that was essentially what started my channel uh, you know and uh, you're also asking, um, you're also asking, uh, uh, how did you get the motivation to upload frequently? And you also said, I want to start using my YouTube account for videos. So, okay, so um, how did I get the motivation to upload frequently? Um, it's really interesting because I actually went through a very big journey on YouTube because essentially, I'm trying to think of a quick way of summarizing it. So I started my channel uh, as an AMV channel. And then I started to make Madoka videos, and which was basically the three that I mentioned. And then after that, I kind of took a break. I sort of, uh, because I guess you can kind of say that I had other things that I had to focus on at that point. Because I had to, my, my mother had passed away and I was also trying to focus on school. So my life was kind of in a very big transitional period. So I spent time away from making videos on this channel. And I basically went to school for a while. And then after a while, 
I decided to uh, make more videos on YouTube, but I didn't make Madoka videos. I essentially made another account called SOS Anime Review, where I started making videos about um, you know other topics in relationship to anime. And then eventually, I came back to the Madoka channel, and um, I decided to make it a Madoka channel, uh, and that was the only thing that I started started to upload. Uh, so, my motivation for wanting to upload again, it really just comes from having a realization. And the realization that I basically came to in wanting to come back to this channel is that, you know, over the years I have made several attempts to make videos about different things other than Madoka, some of which are on this channel and some of which are on are, are, are on some other channels. So you could essentially say I started off with Madoka, then I tried to make videos about talking about other anime on a different channel, and then I tried to make videos about Magical Girl animes on this channel. I also tried to do voice acting. I also tried to do self-help. I also tried to do, um, I'm trying to think what else there was, but Oh yeah, and I also tried to do gaming. I tried to do gaming on this channel in the live streams that I used to do. So you could essentially say that uh, in becoming a YouTuber, I found myself wanting to do a lot of different experiments because you could kind of say that I was trying to figure out who I was as a YouTuber and I was trying to find myself and trying to figure out, you know, what types of videos do I want to make the most? What do I enjoy making the most? What seems to be what is helping me to, you know, like, uh, connect with other people the most and my and, and Madoka seems to be the thing that I enjoy making videos of the most it also seems to be the way in which I can connect with people the most in relationship to talking about Madoka so um, you know and, and as I said this realization was something that I personally had to go through over the years that I've been a YouTuber, you know, and uh, I guess an, an easy way to sort of explain this is to say, you could essentially say that Madoka was my first love. You could say that Madoka was, was my wife. It was somebody that I married that I was madly in love with. Over time, because we spent so much time together, the relationship began to grow stale. We started to have problems. We started to argue. We started to not be content with each other. And once, and once, and, and eventually, all this arguing and all this fighting uh, made us break up. We essentially had a divorce. And when I divorced myself from Madoka, I basically decided to screw every single girl that I could find in the idea that I tried to do a lot of different things that were not related to Madoka. Magical girl shows, I tried to make videos about magical girls, I tried to make vlogs, I tried to make gaming videos. And in having those relationships with other girls, that when, that was when he was able to realize that you know there there are other you know there there's other women out there but there's nothing like the one that I left. So essentially, I've made videos about other things on this channel and on different channels, but my love of Madoka and making videos about Madoka is stronger than any love I've ever had for making videos about other things. So it was realizing this that inspired me to want to come back to this channel and it inspired me to want to make videos again. You know, making videos is definitely a struggle because it, it does take effort. You know, trying to be a YouTuber takes effort if you're trying to do it right. If you're if you're trying to edit videos, you're trying to make thumbnails, you're trying to, you know, uh, you know, just make videos that you're passionate about, but at the same time, you know, you have to find a balance of making videos that you like to do, but at the same time, videos that are going to help people and the idea that, you know, you're, you're making videos that people are looking for so that you can serve them, so that you can connect with them, so that you can build a community of people that are similar to you, you have similar goals and similar interests. You know, it takes a lot of effort to be a YouTuber in the right way. Um, so, but yeah, I would say what really just, what motivated me to want to, uh, upload frequently on this channel is really just my passion for Madoka being realized. Like I was able to rekindle that passion and realizing that hey, there's nothing like any. There, there, there is. I have more of a connection with Madoka than I do everything else. Uh, so yeah, that, that that's where my motivation comes from. It just came from the realization. Hey, my my wife, my first love is 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 there is no one on this whole earth that is like her. And that I and, and, and coming to this conclusion has really pushed me to want to just want to get like right back into the game again. And uh, and at the same time, I've been going through a lot of different struggles in my life. And 
the the story that is within Madoka, meaning the story that that takes place with the characters has been very inspirational and in helping me to overcome a lot of different struggles because uh, I, I um, I, one, of, one of the things I like about this anime is the fact that you have these, these girls that go through a whole lot of different struggles that I can relate to. Like you have, you know, Saiga who, who has confidence issues. You have Homura who struggles to overcome all odds to achieve her goals and ambitions. You have Mommy who is lonely and who is very self-sacrificing. She doesn't love herself as much as she should. So there are a lot of like human aspects of this series that really help that has really helped me in my own life in relationship to overcoming different struggles. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to make more videos where I can go more in depth with what I'm trying to say because there's there's a lot in relationship to that. Uh, so yeah, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully this is kind of a roundabout way of answering this question. Um, so and so it, it, it looks like you're, you're trying to find some form of motivation to want to be active on your channel. Well, I mean, um, it's interesting because uh, how to be, you know, there are several ways to try to motivate yourself to have a YouTube channel. I would say the most important thing is try to figure out what it is that you like to make. Like, for example, let's say that don't worry about the views. Don't worry about popularity. If you could make any video about any subject that you want and you knew that you couldn't fail in making those videos, what would you make videos about? Uh, and whatever answer you come to is probably what you should be making videos about. I think that with YouTube, you know, you, you, you have to really think about what it is that you care about and what it is that you like and then, and, and, you know, and then focus on that. And, and I say this because this is what I do. Because, for example, I would not be able to make Madoka videos if I did not truly enjoy the process of making videos. That is all about passion. If I don't have passion to do something, it's it's almost impossible to do it. So I think that it really starts with what it is that you like. Like whatever it is that that you that you really care about um, should be where your focus starts. You know, and uh, you know. So, so, so just think about whatever it is that you really care about in relationship to what you want to make videos about and don't concern yourself with the, with getting attention or blah, blah, blah. So in other words, you should make videos for yourself. You should make videos because they make you happy, because they make you feel like you're expressing yourself, because they make you feel like that, you know, uh, you're, 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 you're just able to indulge in whatever passion that you have. Cause, cause that's why I do it. I focus on what it is that I most like, uh, which is Madoka. And I just essentially make videos that I really want to make. And in, and in making videos that, and, and in doing that, I'm able to fulfill my, my artistic expression. Because to me, when I make a video, it's the same way as making art. It's the same way as being a person who is sculpting or painting something. Because when, when I'm making videos, I'm editing them a certain way. I'm recording them a certain way. Uh, the subjects that I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking about, you know, what I'm talking about and I'm just allowing my imagination to kind of run wild as to how I go about my videos. So, like, so you could essentially say that I make videos because it fulfills my artistic need in expressing myself and in, and, and in expressing myself, I feel really good. I feel alive. I feel wonderful. I love editing videos. I love coming up with different topics to, to talk about in relationship to Madoka. I just love the whole process. So for me, it's about passion. So you really have to think about what you're passionate about and make that the focus. Don't focus on being popular. Don't focus on pleasing other people. Really try to get yourself to a point where, where, where you are just focusing on what you love. And, and by you focusing very intensely on what you love, you will eventually find people who will gravitate toward you. It's just like with this channel. When I when I first came up with the idea of wanting to do a Madoka channel, I had a person that said it's never gonna work because nobody is gonna care because Madoka's not popular enough. But I was able to throw the I was able to grow the channel to three thousand subscribers and we're still growing. So what I'm trying to say is that I chose something that was very niche, not because I wanted to be popular, not because I wanted to be, you know, any kind of YouTuber. I just focused on what I what I like to talk about and what I'm what I'm passionate about and what I wanted to express. And just in me focusing on that every single day, because I uploaded a video every single week for two years 
uh, and I'm starting to, 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 to do that again slowly, but in me uploading a video every single week for two years, I was able to grow this channel to 3,000 subscribers, and, and that was because of passion. It wasn't because I wanted to be popular. It wasn't because I wanted to grow. I just wanted to express myself in relationship to Madoka, why I loved it, why it changed my life, why it, it brought joy to my life. And, 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 and just to me, focusing on my passion is, is when all the views came and all the people came, but that was never my, my true focus. That was just something that just happened as a result of focusing on my passion. So yeah, if you're trying to start a channel, the best way to motivate yourself to want to keep making videos is to is to just solely focus on what matters the most to you in the videos that you create. And over time, you will get better at making those videos because you're going to constantly keep working on them. Uh, you know, so yeah. If you have any more questions regarding this or if you want a, a more in-depth answer or something, uh, feel free to, you know, ask me, you know, uh, I'll probably do more Q and A's. So hopefully you'll, you'll show up in one of them. If you have any more questions, I'm definitely happy to help when it comes to YouTube. Um, I'm very passionate about YouTube. I spent a lot of time doing this, so I have, you know, learned a lot of different things and I love to help people or at least to talk to them if they're trying to figure out, you know, how to grow their channels or how to be successful. I really care about this. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this. So, so yeah, hopefully that answers your question. So the next uh, question that we have is from Dragon Fruit. Um, who or what introduced you to Madoka Magica? For me, it was you. <laughs> One day you popped into my recommended. Then I showed, oh, my God. Oh, God, it's so precious. Oh, oh God, that's so precious. Holy shit. Oh, God, I got to read that again. Who or what introduced you to Madoka? For me, it was you. Ooh, ah! uh, one day you popped into my recommended. Then I showed all of my friends to Madoka Magica and we were obsessed. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You even have a little crying. You even have a little crying emotion here. <laughs> you really, you, oh, that's so cute. Um. I really appreciate that. It's wonderful to, to know that I actually helped you to get into the Madoka series, Dragon Fruit. It's really amazing. That's awesome. Especially since my videos are not really tailored toward people who don't know anything about the series. Like most of the videos that I've made on this channel are videos that I make. I kind of assume that who's ever watching most of these videos are people who already know about the Madoka series. Like I don't necessarily craft them uh, for people that don't know them. Uh, but um, yeah, it's really amazing to think that uh, that one of my videos made you care enough to want to get into the series. That's amazing. I think I've only heard one other person in my whole life say that to me. Um, but this, but that that's amazing. I really that's that really that made my day. I'm I'm glad that you were able to take something from my videos that uh, inspired you to get into the show, and then you were able to have your own emotional connection toward it, which I can I can tell from the little emoji thing. You you emotionally this series really captivated you and I'm very happy that I could play a small role in, in helping that to be the case. I'm very happy. Thank you for, for letting me know. That's awesome. Uh definitely helps me it kinda of motivates me. It makes me see that, you know, um my videos are able to help people in a way, to connect themselves to something that is that is truly beautiful, that is truly awe-inspiring with so many characters and and the stories so yeah i'm i'm very happy to know that that i was able to help you to uh you know connect yourself with something that is truly beautiful thank you um uh oh but i still have to answer your question um so uh who or what introduced you to madoka so there's actually an amv an anime music video that helped me to want to get into the madoka series the music video is called Dayman, and just for context, I'm probably going to have it playing at this part. So yeah, that was essentially the AMV that got me to care about Madoka. This particular AMV was very centered around Mommy, and this was essentially my introduction to Mommy. Like, I didn't know anything about her. I just saw this AMV that a friend linked to me, 
And seeing her, you know, in this video going crazy with the guns, it just really, I was essentially captivated by her as a result of seeing what she was doing in this video. And, you know, and it's funny because this AMV sort of makes you feel like Mommy has a lot of scenes in the anime and that she's like a main character. Even though when you actually watch the uh, 12 episode Madoka Magica series, you don't necessarily get that feeling that this is really the case when it comes to her. But, um, yeah, so... Um, that anime music video is what inspired me. I also was a part of a Skype group because I used to, before I became really big in, the, in expressing myself and talking about Madoka, I was very much into making anime music videos. So um, I had a Skype group that I was a part of where I had some people who recommended uh, me to watch Madoka Magica. And um, so it was, it was because of their... You know, essentially they were friends and there were people that I made AMVs with. They essentially encouraged me and, and I had friends link me to, I had a friend link me to that video. And and more or less it was because of the, um, essentially it was because of friends uh, that I essentially was inspired to want to, you know, to want to check it out. It's because of my, my, my editing friends and because of that AMV that I saw. That essentially is what made me want to check out the series and I haven't looked back ever since and now a couple of, a couple of years later we have this channel so yeah I was able to take that passion that started off very simple and I pretty much went to town with it so yeah that's essentially um, how I got into the series hopefully you know so um, I'm gonna link that AMV below if you guys want to check it out um, I think that if you're trying to get somebody into Madoka that's probably not a bad thing to show them but um, anyway uh, yeah so thank you so much for um, for letting me know. If you can remember what video you saw that inspired you to want to watch the series, uh, do let me know. I would be very curious to know what that video is. Anyways, thank you for leaving this comment. This was really beautiful. Thank you. It just makes me happy to know that I had that kind of impact on you. Anyway, moving on. Next uh, question we have is from uh, Maho Shoujo Maisun. Uh, okay, so, well, you can now answer me the question I asked you before about why Puella Magi and Madoka Magica succeeded, yet the clones like Waxis, Yuki, Yuna is a hero, Magical Girl Rising Project, Daybreak Illusion, Magical Girl Sight failed from what you've understood from those shows. So, I think the main reason as to why a lot of the Magical Girl shows that came after Madoka didn't really have the same kind of appeal is because... Uh, these shows focus more on the idea of shock value. It focused, they focus more on the idea of just being edgy for the sake of being edgy. Unlike Madoka that really spent a lot of time focusing on the human condition in relationship to the emotional struggles that people go through that we can all relate to. So you could essentially say that in essence, because of the fact that Madoka only had a few characters to work with in the original series, and because of the fact that they spent time in diving into these characters, like, you know, because you could make the argument that the reason that, that, that Raising Magical Girl Project uh, for example, didn't do very well. From my perspective, from from I've only seen a few episodes, but one issue that I had with that show immediately was the fact that they had so many characters in this anime, and they didn't really spend a lot of time, from what I could tell, in really developing these characters and showcasing, you know, the human connection through these characters. And, you know, you essentially just had a lot of characters that were kind of thrown on the screen and within one episode or two, they just died and they died without you really knowing anything about like who they were. Like, you know, in some cases you did get like a few, a little bit of a backstory, but not enough, in my opinion, that really made me feel an actual connection with these characters. And Madoka, and I think a lot of us who have seen the series understands that this is a series that really showcases a lot in relationship to these characters and you have to give them a lot of credit because they they did this in a very short time frame because by the time the series is over you know we have seen you know different aspects of all these girls we've seen different aspects of Sayaka we see we know how she starts off we know what her desires and dreams are we we see her in, in pursuit of these things but we see that she is not uh, perfect because she, you know, she goes through a, like a lot of regret. She goes through a lot of pain. She suffers a lot. She has, you know. So what I'm trying to say is that more than anything, these uh, the the Madoka really, really focuses on making these girls human. You know, uh, I have a philosophy 
uh, that you don't have to be perfect in order to be an imperfect being. And this particular, and Madoka is a show that was able to show me that through its characters. Uh, so yeah, I would say that's pretty much it. Madoka Magica understood how to nail the human condition and present it in a way where we were all able to emotionally connect to it. And that's the one thing that all these other shows you know, are, aren't able to do. A lot of them think that, hey, the only reason that Madoka was successful was because only because it was dark, edgy, and had shock value in it. And yes, Madoka did have these things, but it had a lot more than that. Uh, you know, again, I think that uh, the fact that it focused a lot on, human, on the human condition is probably why so many of us were able to feel connected to it. I mean, how many people... Uh, do, you, do you know who love Madoka that, that, that talk about, oh, Homer did nothing wrong? Or how, many, or how many times have you seen people really talk about how much they love seeing Homer and Madoka together because they understand how much Homer loves Madoka and how much struggle that she went through in relationship to her love of Madoka? How, you know, we, we all can relate to really loving someone or we all really sympathize with Homer because we're able to feel emotionally the struggle and the pain and the heartache and the compassion. Like the series shows us, you know, we, we see Homer crying, we see her suffering, we see her, you know, happy, we see her, you know, when, when, when she's being inspired by Madoka and, and like her flashbacks to become a stronger person. You know, we see, you know, this character go through so much and we see how everything that happens to her affects her mental condition. It's like the Homer that we see at the beginning of her flashback is totally different than the Homer that we got in the, uh, in the original timeline that we see in the anime, which is like, you know, like the third timeline or whatever. But what I'm trying to say is that all of us that watch the series understand you know all these different aspects of Homer and 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 and, and we all you know we, we understand the pain and we understand the emotions behind everything so I think that you know the fact because the fact that the series really goes out of its way to focus on the human aspect of these characters is why is why um is why it was able to of why it was able to uh is why it was able to be successful. So yeah, that's uh, that's essentially my perspective on it. Uh, I do want to make some videos where I go a little bit more in depth in relationship to this question, uh, because as I said, I, I feel like that while I definitely expressed uh, the main idea as to why these, these shows did not work, um, I do think that there's probably more to it than that. So uh, I definitely do plan on taking some time to watch uh, these animes that you mentioned from start to finish and I will be able to give you a thorough explanation in more detail as to why Madoka surpassed all these other uh, Magical Girl shows and why the stuff that comes after it, uh, it doesn't do as it isn't as good so look forward to that you guys I'm definitely gonna make a video on on that subject because uh, I think that there's a lot that we all can learn about the nature of storytelling, like why we gravitate towards certain characters and certain stories. I do think that there is a science to it, and I just, I briefly explained it, and I want to get more in depth with it, which I will. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mysoon, for uh, asking me this question, and hopefully it was uh, satisfying. Let me know if you happen to watch this video, and I will definitely f uh, fulfill your request in making, you know, more videos where I go in more depth. Uh, as to why this is the case. But yeah, the, the short answer is human connection. Uh, if you're trying to tell a story in fiction, you know, you have to really understand what drives people emotionally and you have to be able to craft your characters and story in a way that's going to really, uh, really make someone feel something that makes them feel emotional connection. If you don't do that in the right way, then you're going to have a very hard time trying to sell any kind of a story. Uh, because we all gravitate toward what we can relate to. Even if, even if we don't always admit it, we, we gravitate toward what we can relate to. And that's what drives us to feel emotional. And that's what drives us to want to support it. I mean, that's what drives me to make this channel. I feel an emotional connection with these characters, which is what inspires the videos that I make. So there you go. Anyway, I hope this uh, satisfied your question, my soon. Anyway, moving on. We have a question from King of Blades, who was actually in my last Q&A. He's pretty frequent in my... Videos. So, uh, King of Blades asked me, 
I like that you're being more active, but I think another Q&A is a bit too soon. Maybe a live stream or something would have been better, a better option. However, since you have asked, I have a few questions. One, what made you want to return to YouTube? And you seem on hiatus for a long time and have showed up seemingly out of nowhere. Sorry if you've answered this before. Um, I technically actually answered this question within this very Q&A uh, earlier. So to make a long story short, just to briefly go over what I said, um, what inspired me to come back was realizing that I love making videos about Madoka more so than anything else. You know, I love making videos in general. I have been making videos on YouTube for many years. I started in 2011 making AMVs. Uh, that was when I learned how to do video editing, and that was where my obsession with YouTube started. And ever since then, I have continuously been on this platform, on different accounts, making tons of different videos. You know, I started off with AMVs, then I started off making Madoka stuff, then I started making videos about other animes on my anime channel. I also have a vlogging channel. I have a voice acting channel. I technically have a gaming channel, which... Uh, it's, it's a secret channel that I probably won't share because that was when I was very new to YouTube and I didn't know what I was doing. What I'm trying to say is that I have always been obsessed with the idea of making videos and uploading them to YouTube. And Madoka just so happens to be the thing that I get the most passion out of. Like, I have more passion for making videos about Madoka than any other subject that I've done so far. And it's realizing that this was the case that inspired me to want to come back. You know, I spent a lot of time making videos about other things that weren't Madoka related and I think that in doing that I was able to give myself a break because I was making Madoka videos consistently for two years without making videos about anything else and when you do that when you focus on something for a long time sometimes it's easy to feel like you're, you're trapped or you feel kind of stale or you feel like you need to change something about yourself because you kind of get bored doing the same thing so I, I gave myself some time to try to do videos about other things and in me doing that it helped me to rekindle my passion for making Madoka videos again and it helped me to realize that hey I love making videos about this more than I do anything else so it was in realizing how passionate I am about making videos about Madoka and also a lot of it is because of the fact that you guys uh, you know because a lot of people left my channel when I started to make videos about other things but when the McGill record anime was announced uh, I got like 30 subs on the day that the announcement was made and this was actually when I had decided that I wanted to make a voice acting channel and I will definitely say that you know the fact that a lot of you guys who really loved me for my Madoka videos the fact that a lot of you guys came back and were letting me know that hey a new anime was coming out it made me remember and realize you know um, how much fun it was to interact with you guys and make videos you know in relationship to what I love and you know, seeing a lot of you guys come to me just just made me just made me remember, and it inspired me to want to, you know, to want to come back. I I would also say the announcement of Megia Record is also part of it. The fact that there's a new anime coming out, just the idea of a new Madoka anime coming out, did massively inspire me to want to to want to make videos again. So yeah, it was a combination of Megia Record as well as realizing that you know there is nothing that I enjoy on YouTube more than making uh, these types of videos about Madoka. And um, yeah, so as I mentioned before, that's kind of like uh, kind of going over what I had said previously. Uh, hopefully, if you're watching this video, you're kind of watching what I said before because I, I kind of, I explain, because I give a slightly more detailed explanation earlier than this. This is just me kind of glossing over it. But yeah, uh, Madoka is like the wife that I loved and married and uh, I divorced it because we had issues. I decided to go date other girls, AKA making videos about other content. After I had a chance to do that, I realized there was nothing like my original life. I went back to my life, which is which in essence is making videos about Madoka. And upon going back to it, I realized how much I loved it. And my passion for uh, the love that I have for Madoka is why you are getting videos right now. So yeah, I'm just here to uh, express my love and express why, how this series has inspired me in my life and to connect with people who feel the same as me. So yeah, that's, uh, that's basically, that's my answer. Um, King of Blades, the second question is, rank the main Madoka Magic, bleh, rank, rank the main Madoka Magic girls from favorite to least favorite, also include Nagisa as she was in the movie. 
Okay, so how I think I'm going to answer this question, just to make it more interesting, is I'm going to rank all the magical girls that I like, not just in the main Madoka Magica series, but I'm going to take the spin-off mangas and Magia Record um, into account when I'm doing this ranking system. My favorite is Mommy. My second favorite is Isuzune. My third favorite is Sayaka. My fourth favorite is Kyoko. Fifth favorite is Madoka. My sixth favorite is probably Ria Ami. Uh, from Megia Record. After that is Homura. After that is probably Elena from Megia Record. Elena Gray. And then after that is Oracle from Oracle Magica. Then after that is Nagisa. Then after that it is Kazumi from Kazumi Magica. Oh, wait, wait. There's actually one character that I forgot. And I think her name is Nanami Yashio from Megia Record. Uh, I would put her on my favorite list. So yeah, th these are basically my favorite girls ranked in order, uh, from least from my favorite to my least favorites in the whole of Madoka. Uh, I, I have a feeling that this this order might change as we get closer to the Megia Record anime. But as of right now, that is those are my favorite girls. Um, so, okie dokie. So, so okay. So yeah, that's basically. Uh, how I would rank the magical girls. Uh, King of Blades also asked me, how is 2018 for you as a year overall for you? Let's see, how was 2018? 2018, and probably this video is going to be uploaded after uh, 2018. I'm recording this. Uh, but anyway, so how was 2018 for you as a year overall? 2018 was a really great year for me because... For me personally, this was a year that I really spent a lot of time uh, in, in the idea of self-developing myself because I'm, I'm a person that really cares a lot about self-help and what self-help basically is is that it's basically learning about who you are as a person, like how you, like why you respond to things psychologically and uh, just, you know, what what's important to you in your life. So I spent a lot of time uh, in 2018 doing a lot of self discovery within myself like really going within myself and learning about who I am as a person and what matters most to me in my life like the goals that I want to achieve um the type of people that I want to be around you know I just really spent a lot of time just digging into myself emotionally this year and really trying to understand more of who I am and how to uh I guess uh, uh heal myself emotionally you could kind of say because I think all of us in this in, in, in our life we all we're all traumatized by different experiences that shape who we are and a lot of times the reason that the uh, the reason that we remain traumatized is because we don't take the time to go within ourselves and to understand you know our, our our mental condition as to why we are affected in the way that we are by the things that we've experienced so I've spent a lot of time uh, just digging into my mind and understanding myself this year. So this was a fantastic year for me in the idea that I was able to mentally and emotionally grow into a stronger human being, um, you know, um, and uh, maybe I'll get in, you know, and uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, for example, this was a year that I was able to become vegan after struggling to become vegan for a long time. And this is the year that, you know, that I, you know, I, I, I just really grew and advanced as a human being. Uh, from from all the from all the different people that I met this year, so yeah, 2018 was fantastic. I also found a lot of great anime this year. This was the year that I found Higurashi, which was a fantastic anime that I really loved, and uh, I'm sure there's probably some other animes too. I you know, but yeah, so this was a really great year. I I, I did get to see some. I didn't I didn't find a whole lot of anime, but yeah, overall this was a fantastic year. This was 2018 for me will always be the year that I was able to spiritually grow more as a human being. Um, that's why I have such high hopes for 2019 because I have a lot of things that I can't wait to do. So yeah, so there you go. Uh, but yeah, 2018 was fantastic. Uh, I hope your 2018 was good, King of Blades, and everybody who's watching this video. Um, but uh, yeah. In fact, if you guys have any goals for this year, let me know in the comments and, you know, maybe we can kind of support each other in relationship to that. But anyway, so the next question that King of Blaze asked me, have you watched the transformation for the main Madoka girls in Madoka Magical Record? And if so, what do you think of their adult forms and why do you think they get younger when transforming? So, 
I just found a video that just says grown up magical magical girl. Now I don't know if this is what King of Blades is referring to when he says what do I think about the characters becoming adults. Now this version of Madoka technically looks a little bit older than the one that I would expect from the anime. But I don't know, is, is this her being a grown-up? Is that what this is? That did, did that actually happen in, in the Magia record game? Like, like are these characters grown up or are they just like themselves? I'm, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a little bit confused by this. So I suppose I am going to have to say that at this, at this moment, I don't have an answer because I don't understand. Um, so I never realized that in, okay, so I'm actually looking at a comment where a person, well, I never realized that in the Madoka Kaname transformation, that was her grown up self. I actually used to think she was just a goddess Madoka. Okay, so apparently, I could be wrong since I haven't seen anything of God. So apparently, these Megia record transformations, outside of the transformation, they may be allowed to age, but when they transform, they revert back to the age they were when they contracted. I'm sure Kyubei can give us a better explanation in regards to the entropy of it and why this phenomenon happens this way. And so every next season of Megia record and prepare for more rebellion, secret information in the new world is far more complex than it was in the first season of Madoka Magica. Okay, so essentially, so okay, so I guess that basically answers my question. Um, so apparently these Megia record transformations uh, showcase the girls being adults. Uh, or maybe they were always adults when they transformed. I never really considered that to be a thing. Uh, it's, it's interesting because this is actually something that they did in the lyrical Nanaha, more so the lyrical Vivid and Vivid Strike, where, where, where when the girls transformed, they became actual adults. I question if Madoka might have taken this idea, but I feel like in, in, in Nanoha Vivid, it's more obvious that this is actually a thing with the characters, more so than it is in Madoka. So I question if this was inspired by Nanoha Vivid, but it's interesting. Um, as I said, I will admit that my, okay, actually, now that I think about it, because I'm looking at this image of Mommy with more hair, definitely Mommy looks older. She definitely looks older in this particular shot than she so so I I see what you're saying King of Blades uh I see what you see I see what you're saying when you say that the girls are supposedly older when they transform and that's really yeah I was gonna say this is that look at that that actually is really interesting what the fuck what what actually is up with that what is actually up with that wow that that is really interesting that is really interesting so essentially you have mommy that is an adult and she is essentially uh, transforming. That's amazing. And she becomes younger when she transforms. That is really bizarre. Like, what in the actual fuck? Like, what is actually going on with that? That is really interesting. I think that's very interesting. That is definitely a different element to add with... Oh, my mommy looks so cute. Look at her. But um, this is definitely a very interesting aspect of Madoka to have uh in this series that's very interesting i don't know how they're going to use this in the anime or how this is going to be used beyond rebellion if they use everything that is being presented in mcgear record oh man that next movie is going to be a doozy because there's so much stuff that they've been throwing in oh my goodness gracious um anyway so yeah uh my reaction to that uh is that this is very interesting i was not aware of of that uh, in relationship to Megia Record. I guess we'll have to see what happens. That's 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 pretty fascinating stuff though. Wow. That's really interesting. That's very interesting actually. I'll I'll have to look more into that when this video is done recording. But thank you for sharing that King of Blades. Anyway, um so yeah that answers that question. Wait a minute. Um okay so okay so that that's your that's your question. You also asked as mentioned earlier Madoka Magical Record shows the girls, adults, do you think this could be some sort of hint to a timeline where the girls survive and live happily? Or could it be showing the future of Devil Homura's new timeline? Oh, jeez. And final, at the end of the... Very interesting questions here. So, King of Blade, this is very interesting. Uh, so, yeah, he's asking... Um, he's asking... Uh, as mentioned earlier, Madoka Magica records shows the girls adults. 
Do you think this could be some sort of hint to a timeline where the girls survive and live happily? Or could it be showing the future of Devil Homer's? Oh God, that is incredible. What an interesting question that is. Holy crap. I definitely did not consider it. It could be. This is not even something that I've even had a chance to think about. Damn, this could be, this could be a video in and of itself. Uh, this really could be a great video <laughs> in and of itself. Uh, well, uh, yeah, thank you, King of Blades. This is, this is very interesting. This is very interesting. Um, I definitely think there's a possibility that this could be the case. I mean, considering that at the end of the third movie, because of the fact that Homer essentially created a scenario in which the girls were supposed to have happy lives uh, within her world, who's to say that this, that this didn't last for a very long time to the point that they were all able to grow up within the world that Homer created. Can you imagine that for a second? Imagine if that was actually something that did happen. That's fucking insane to think that, to think that, uh, that, that a world like that would be created where the girls would become adults because of, uh, within Homer's fabricated world that she created at the end of the third movie. Can you imagine the, the, like the landscape of Madoka would be so different if that actually did happen? But the fact that that even exists means that in some timeline, I guess this really, the girls do grow up and something does, but that that's amazing, especially since people have always said before, oh, oh I want to see adult Magica girls in Madoka Magica. Is it possible to become adults within the Madoka Magica series? Uh, so yeah, obviously the answer to that is yes, though I think that when Nanami Yashio was created in Megira Record, because I think she's 19, she was... Uh, already an example of an adult magical girl that exists within the series. But yeah, this is really interesting. This is really, really interesting. Um, so yeah, I definitely do think that there is a possibility. Uh, I, I'll, you know, we'll have to see. I will admit that I don't know. Like, how do you guys feel about that? Do you feel that... Uh, I, You know, it's funny. I might actually make this a separate video. But do you guys feel like... How do you think the Madoka series would be if the characters actually grew grew up like can you imagine a timeline where you have an adult mommy and an adult Kyoko and Sayaka and Homer like can you imagine what what the series would be like if the characters were adults do you think that the anime would be better if this actually happened or do you think it would be worse like it's just hard to believe I think if the girls grew up they would be a little bit more relatable because if like if mommy was an adult she would be Maybe she'd be more relatable, or maybe she would have like more real life problems or struggles. There's actually a Madoka manga that sort of plays with the idea of mommy being single and alone, and you sort of can see, you know, what she's like as an adult. I really, really like that manga a lot. Um, I'm probably gonna go read it after I've made this recording, but oh my god. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, so this, this was a fantastic, uh, little thing that you uh, presented king of blaze it does make you think and it does make you question what could could that could this very well be the case could there be adult magical girls in a timeline in which homer created or maybe or maybe in a timeline where you know where it's not homer's creation so let me know what you guys think about this i think this would make for a very interesting discussion thank you king of blaze awesome let's see here and Finally, okay, so the final question that he asked me is, and finally, at the end of the third movie, do you think Homura keeps Kube as like a pet as sort of a punishment? Maybe she can give emotions to make him feel some kind of despair. Did she just straight up erase him from existence? Uh, let's see here. Uh, and finally, at the end of the third movie, do you think Homura keeps Kube as like a pet? I think that Kube, I think at the end of the third movie, it's kind of shown that Homer is kind of keeping Kube under her thumb in the idea that she's probably using Kube to play some role in sustaining her world in relationship to the entropy. But at the same time, she's also making sure that he's not able to do anything that I guess would uh, cause any, he, he's not doing anything that would cause any He's not doing anything that would cause harm to the other girls. Like, I mean, it goes without saying, Kube is not going to be allowed to get close to Madoka. 
And Cubay is not going to be allowed to do anything that would tamper with the world that Homer has created. So I think that Homer is probably going to keep Cubay under her thumb, but at the same time, she's going to use him uh, and you know and the, and, and the incubators to sustain uh, the world that she created in some way. Uh, you know, so yeah, I, I, in a sense, yes, Homer has is keeping Cube as a pet of sorts. She is keeping him. It's funny because Cube kind of resembles a cat, and you could kind of say and that whole idea of Homer petting and touching Cube is probably foreshadowing that 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 Cube has in fact become Homer's pet. <laughs> like you know, it's like he, he, Cube is no longer in control. He 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 tampered and fucked with humans so much. Uh, in relationship to all the things that he did with the wishes, that he finally got karma in the form of Homer, pretty much. Uh, now, now she's the one who is in control and who's and who's making and who's bending Cube to her will and making him do what she wants him to do. It's very poetic when you think about all the all the things that Cube did and all the conflict that Cube has had with Homer throughout the series because Homer. In the beginning of the Madoka series, she always felt so helpless in having to deal with him. And now a situation has happened where the tables have now turned. And now Homer is the one that's in control. And, and you know what I mean? It's just so poetic because, again, Homer struggles so much in dealing with him. And now finally a situation has occurred where she, where she's the one that's in control. Kyube has no choice but to bend to her will. It's poetic justice. You know, especially if, again, if you're a big Homer fan and you and you really feel sympathy for all the shit she went through with Cube, it's, you know, the, the, the what happened in the third movie is pretty fucking amazing <laughs> when you look at it from that perspective. So, there you go. Thank you for all those questions, King of Blade. I will admit it was a little tough to navigate through them, but I do appreciate them nevertheless. Thank you. Okay, so, so the very next question that we have here comes from uh, the Fantastic Fur, and his question is, if you were to make a Madoka Magical OC, what would it be? Uh, wow, this is actually a great question because I actually do have a theory video that I will eventually release where I essentially make my own original character that I will inject into the Madoka Magical story. And essentially, this OC is actually a magical girl who has the powers and characteristics of a vampire. Um, one thing about me is that I have a really big interest when it comes to vampires and fiction. I more so like female vampires. I, I have a really big, you know, interest in uh, a lot of different anime characters that are female vampires. Like, I like Shinobu from the Monogatari series, more so the short chibi version. I don't care about the adult version. I also like Shizuka from the anime Vampire Night. I just love female vampires because I just love the idea of them, you know, sucking, like, blood of, like, males and sort of bending those males to their will. I just have always been into girls that display these types of characteristics. And vampire uh, chicks really uh, kind of highlight, like, these aspects of seduction and manipulation more so than, like, other types of girls within, you know, fiction in general, which is a big part of the reason why I love them. So... Uh, my idea for a Madoka OC would be to make a vampire character who essentially, I guess she's kind of similar to Shinobu from the Monogatari series, and the idea is that she would be a blonde, lolly uh, type of girl who would probably be wearing like a Lolita outfit. She would have uh, characteristics of being evil and manipulative. I think her power would essentially be... She would have the ability to bite her opponents, and if she bites her opponents a certain amount of time, she can manipulate them and force them to 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 bend to her will. In other words, she can kind of control them uh, if she bites them, like I guess three times. And I also like the idea of her being able to suck energy from her opponents. It's like she's not going to be a character that's going to be physically strong, but she's going to have the ability to suck energy from other opponents which is going to which is, which is what gives her the energy to sustain you know her life and and what and what essentially gives her the ability to continue to be um you know like a magical girl so 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 yeah essentially her powers and her abilities are going to come from stealing energy from other people and she's going to have the ability to control people um to her will if she bites them like a certain amount of times essentially this is a magical girl that is going to have all the characteristics of a female vampire you could essentially say who is slightly evil and slightly manipulative and she's going to be a lolita lolly gothic chick um so i may have some images 
on the screen which might give you an idea of the vision that I have in my head for what type of OC magical girl that I would create. I also have plans for a future video where I am going to uh, showcase this character and uh, make it interesting in the idea of a Madoka theory. So yeah, that's basically my idea of, of a character, uh, of an OC character that uh, I would make and inject within the Madoka series. Uh, because again, I love vampires, I love blonde-like chicks, I think blonde chicks are beautiful. Um, and, and, and yeah, so yeah, essentially that, that, that's my idea for an OC. I definitely hope to make a video about that and to be able to show you guys and you guys can tell me what you think. Anyway, so we have a question from Swag Bunny, the swag in the bunny. A uh, very long time viewer who I'm very happy to have on this channel. So Swag Bunny asked me, which character in Puella Magi Madoka Magica, in your opinion, has the best shoulders? How the f where did this even come from? Like, like what? What do you? I don't even know how to answer this question. What's which character in Plum Magic and Madoka Magic, in your opinion, has the best shoulders? I don't even know. I think it's Kyoko. Kind of random, I know. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty freaking random. I don't even know how to answer this question. Like, how do you even begin? Let me see if I can do a search on it. Because how do you even begin to know who has the best shoulders? Um. One thing I will say about Kyoko, though, Kyoko probably has good shoulders because you can kind of see them because they're, like, really bare or some shit like that. Because um, when you think about Kyoko's Magical Girl outfit, and when you think about her bare Magical Girl outfit, you know, Kyoko probably has really good shoulders because you can, you see them here, you can actually see them a little bit more. I mean, I, I guess they do look kind of nice. It's hard to say because I just... It might just be like the clothes that highlight the shoulders. I don't. I can't believe I'm. I'm. I'm analyzing shoulders. What? The, what are you? What are you having me do, Swag? But, I mean, her shoulders do look nice. Um, I don't know if they're the best. Um, but they are nice. Let's take a look at Sayaka's shoulders since I have this open. Um, ooh, look at Sayaka. She looks like a diva in this shot right here. That's pretty cool. Sayaka might have some nice shoulders. Um. Sayaka might have some nice shoulders. Um, let's see here. Okay, so I decided to do a little... I decided to do a little search on YouTube. And what I'm actually doing right here is I'm trying to find... If you guys remember the cake song in the Madoka Magica series where you have the girls around the table and they're talking about cake or whatever. Um, so I'm looking at this because I feel like this particular uh, thing kind of kind of shows you a little bit more because for example you can see mommy's shoulders here you can see madoka's shoulders here and so i'm i feel like this this video so you can see homer's shoulders it's kind of hard to judge shoulders because of, especially because of the outfits like what the fuck like i'm trying to think okay you know what i like saika's shoulders in this she looks th these look really good uh Maybe, I don't know if it's because of the outfit or what, but Sayaka's shoulders look really nice in this shot right here. Uh, so maybe it's, yeah, her shoulders actually, I can't believe I'm focusing on this. Like, what the fuck is this? Sayaka does have nice shoulders, like, especially with her, like, bare skin. She does have nice shoulders, to be honest with you. I mean, they are, you know, she has nice shoulders. Maybe it's Sayaka. Um, maybe it's, I like Sayaka's shoulder. Kyoko has, okay, Kyoko has nice shoulders too. I think my favorites are Sayaka's. I don't know if it's the outfit or what, but I just, somehow I just, I think Sayaka's shoulders are the best. You know, um, but what do you guys think? Who do you think has the best shoulders? I think Sayaka's the best. Kyoko has the second best shoulders. She might be able to compete with them, um, but that mommy has beautiful shoulders too, though. But then again, everything about mommy is beautiful. <laughs> everything about mommy is beautiful. <laughs> um... You know what? Fuck it. I think mommy has the best shoulders. She has the best shoulders because I say so. Damn it. I don't care. Mommy has the best shoulders. She has the best everything. She's so cute. Ooh. Mommy's so cute. Mommy has the best everything. So mommy basically wins. I don't care. So anyway, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this Q&A. Uh, I want to wish myself luck in trying to edit this crap because this is going to be long as hell. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. I will definitely do more Q&As in the future. Uh, if you actually got this far in the video, you are amazing. Uh, and I'll catch you later. This is Mommy Sexual signing out. Peace.